So this is the M11 assembly video. This, vi this uh, block has these diamonds in it, but it has been modified to make it different for English paper piecing. So what this is going to be is it's going to be appliqued onto a big square. So the background is a square, and then we've got these diamonds placed in these really strange formations. So what I've done here is I've found the middle of this drawing in each of the sides and drew this very faint pencil line so that I could see how to place this. So when we place this, we're going to start in the center here with this B diamond. These are two different sizes, but they're very similar, so I had to label them when I was doing my block prep. So I'm going to center this with these points on this line and these points on this line that I'm going to put on my background square. And then I'm going to be able to, from there, I'm going to be able to place these triangles because it'll be the, uh, excuse me, these diamonds. It'll be, the points will be on the edge here and then this will be on the center line. So you'll have three of the four points to line up with and then this one is connected to this and these will be, so once we get these on here, then we can place these two because you've got these points to connect to on three reference points. So that'll be the way that the placement's gonna go. And I have my stuff over here. I have my background all ready to go. And what I'm gonna do is I'll base this and draw directly on the fabric in a very faint pencil line because then I can erase it, but that way I've got reference points to go from. For these, I'm just going to baste the opposite ends and then the other sides, and um, then I can tuck my tags in as I applique. So I'm going to baste this center diamond and prep this for placement with my pencil. So I've basted my diamond, and this is the, the arrow right way up. So if I flip it over, I can see that I've got these little arrows on my fabric. So my arrows on my fabric are going to be corresponding with the actual direction it needs to be. So I've got my faint lines here with pencil, and I'm going to take this and center each point on the line. It is, is, is not too hard to get it off kilter. So make sure that each one of these points is lined up with the pencil line. And then I take my stapler and staple it down so that it holds it in two points so that I can applique it better. So I will attach that and then I can be able to applique it down. So I've appliqued the center diamond onto my square. So the next thing to do is to attach one of these A diamonds. So I've, I've uh, basted this one. I'm going to make sure that my arrows on my fabric are pointing up like this one. And I ha this is going to be placed, this is this diamond here. So I'm going to make sure that this point touches my line, which is kind of faded. I'm going to make sure that this point touches the edge and this point touches the other edge. Now the idea though is to make sure that this touches the other point. So I'm going to line this up and make sure that it definitely touches this line and this. If it falls a little short on the bottom, that's okay. because I can. But I want to make sure that visually this touches this other diamond here. So I want to give it a chance to do that. So I'm going to staple this to the pay, to the square, and then I'm going to baste this other one, and then place it, make sure that I've got proper placement before I stitch this down. So I'll place and staple this one too, and then I can applique them both on the same time. So I've stapled my other diamond down. And so then I'm gonna, I've got this other one basted and I made sure that it's an A, not a B. So if I point, touch, make this touch here and then make it touch the side. I know you can't see it well with the two tags there, but then it comes directly to the edge of that. Now I could 
move this point slightly down, but I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference, so I'm not going to. I'm going to staple this one down. The other thing that happens sometimes with the staple is the risk is that it will snag a fiber, and I've not had this happen until now, but it is a risk. So what I do have is a pile of Sharpies of many different colors that I collect. So I'm going to use the closest color to fill this thread pull in after I'm done, just in the spots that make a difference. But this is a risk when you do use the stapler method. So keep that in mind. But I'm going to staple this down and then I can applique these all at the same time in one big motion. So I've appliqued these two diamonds on, and so the next will be, the next obvious thing to be doing is then we're going to do this side, because then I've got two points on each side to line up these. So we're going to do this side next in the same way we did this. So I have stapled down the other two after I've lined them up. I notice that there's a I kind of try to measure these points from the edge so that it doesn't tip because this is not quite lined up. It will quilt out, as they say, but they're not quite exactly where they need to be. But at the long run, they'll be fine. But if I can make any kind of corrections here. So I tried to measure from here to here and from here to here on this diamond and so on. So that way I can at least make an attempt at making it touch in the middle. I will get down to stitching this down now. So I've attached my diamonds to this side over here, and I've also used my Sharpie to fill in my little white spots that my stapler made. I'm also going to use a white eraser, not a pink one, um, because it erases clean, especially on a light fabric, and I'm going to get rid of all my pencil marks in here. I'm going to leave these, because I'm going to need this one here so I can line up my other two diamonds, but I want to erase these so that number one, I don't forget. Number two, I'm done with kneading those. So I'm going to baste one of these and put it into place for my next applique. So when I place this next diamond, I'm going to line up this point with this. That's pretty obvious. But I'm also going to line up this point here and then this point here, but it's not quite big enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take my paper and make it dimensional. And so that I'm going to take my diamond and that way it will spread the diamond across between the points so that when we quilt it, it's going to be fine. But in the meantime, it's going to take these and spread out the point so that I can put it in the proper position. Because it's all about the position that it appears to be in so that these points are touching properly. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a curve so that this diamond can then go from this to this and spread properly. And then I'm gonna staple it down. So I've attached my diamond and just so you know what I meant I curved this like this, and that way when I go to applique it, I can bend the paper and make that point line up exactly, and then keep it curved as I stitch it down so that when it's done with the fabric and the papers are removed, it will ease into the right position. So I've attached the bottom diamond, and now I'm going to baste and attach the top one. So I've attached my other diamond. This is a bit squished in there because it didn't quite fit. This wasn't a perfect situation, but that's quilting. So um, this will get moved up here once I get the papers out. But now I have a completed M11 block.